We got our hands on 20 of the rarest and most expensive CPUs on the market. But is it enough to beat the silicon lottery and be the fastest CPU rendering farm in the world? Let's find out. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Epic PC channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about a project we ran to create one of the fastest CPU rendering farms in the world. Now, obviously to create a fast CPU rendering farm, you also need a fast CPU. And we got our hands on the AMD Epic 7763s. Now to say these things are rare and expensive is an understatement. Each unit comes in at 12,000 Australian dollars and it is amongst only a handful that actually exist within the Australian market. Each of them come with a crazy 128 threads and 64 cores. And thanks to our partners over at Asus and AMD, we were able to get our hands on 20 of them to try out. This is obviously all built on the backbone of AMD's Zen 3 architecture, which has been absolutely killing the game in world records for CPU performance. We also wanted to choose a 1U server rack for this, and for that we chose the RS700A from Asus. Now, although it is a 1U server rack and it's quite small, it does have a wealth of cooling performance as well as expansion slots. This was good as we needed to fit two of the 7763s in each of the server racks, as well as a whopping one terabyte of RAM to support those CPUs. We did want to cherry pick two of the CPUs that we benchmarked over a few days to see what, what sort of performance we could get from the 7763s. So let's see how they actually did perform. So these units were specifically designed for V-Ray 3D rendering jobs and were capable of achieving the world's highest score in V-Ray 5 with a benchmark score of 109,248 and an average over 25 benchmarks of 94,864. The 7763 has two of the three top scores in the world with the 773X coming in at number two. I would imagine that the 7763 would absolutely dominate this leaderboard if they were more widely available. This smashed the dual AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3995WX score by a whopping 17%. But the price difference is around $3,000 AUD. This CPU sat an average of 2.79 gigahertz with a small amount of overclocking used. In Cinebench R23 against other 128 core systems, our system came in at number one, beating the AMD Epic 7T83 by a fraction. The system had a peak performance of 3.5 gigahertz with a decent amount of overclocking room. This is where we get to see some of the awesome cooling performance of the Asus Pro RS700A come into action with those tiny fans beating out even the water-cooled 7083s. Now Asus has done something really neat with the cooling performance of this specific server unit. They've installed specific uh, plastic covers to channel the air towards the rear of the unit. Now this doesn't help the fact that this sounds like a jet engine taking off when you do have it on, but it's not like you're gonna have one of these sitting in your room with you. So to cap off performance in the Cinebench R23 Mixed, it came in at a ranking of number two, being beaten out by the Threadripper 3990X, but that was cooled with liquid nitrogen and overclocked to over 5.2 gigahertz whereas our unit was exclusively cooled with fans as they were built to be used in a commercial setting. The server also packs two 1600 watt power supplies. Given the fact that this is only a CPU rendering farm, the 1600 watt power supply is not even that necessary, but is designed in a hot swappable and redundant fashion. That means that if a workload was running and one of the power supplies was to blow up, the other one would take over the load and not impact the workload. I'd love to see some of this design being in place in, in traditional computer systems, but for now we're gonna have to settle with turning off our computers and changing the hardware. 
There's no doubt that AMD is absolutely crushing the CPU market at the moment. And this does translate to the high tier server CPUs. Compared to Intel's Xeon platform, using their smaller dies, they're able to get a lower temperature, a lower cost, and a better performance. And we proved that here today, even under air-cooled conditions. I'd love to see how the AMD EPIC 7763 performs using liquid nitrogen or water cooling, and I'm sure they're able to beat our performance in the future when these become more widely available. I would have loved to see the performance of this during gameplay, but unfortunately, we weren't able to get the drivers working for this one. Anyway, until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video.